by the afternoon, the island of Sodor was covered in snow. Thomas, Annie and Clarabel were rested and full of energy. The driver fitted the snow plough and they set off back to the mail depot. There, Percy was feeling foolish and thoroughly derailed. I really am sorry about this, Thomas. Don't worry, said Thomas. The fat controller told me he will have a crane over here by tomorrow. So you don't have long to wait. This time, Annie and Clarabel were enjoying the night's work. It grew colder and colder. Because he was working so hard and the fireman kept stoking the boiler, Thomas didn't notice. When they were crossing the bridge over the river, he suddenly heard a quacking sound. It's a duck, Thomas said to himself. What's he doing awake at this hour? Help, quacked the duck. The driver looked over the bridge at the river. It's Donald's duck and she's frozen, he said. The river's all ice. Help, quacked Donald's duck once more. I've damaged my wing. I can't fly and I can't get off the ice. I'm very cold and I'm quite hungry. Thomas explained the situation to the driver. Oh dear, he replied. It won't be safe for me or the fireman to go on the ice, but we just can't leave her there. We'll have to call for help. Thomas, whistle loudly for about ten minutes. For miles around, lights came on in the houses as people wondered who was making all that noise in the middle of the night. But no one came to find out why. Thomas tried again. Shh, said the fireman. I can hear something. In the distance was the whirring sound of Harold the helicopter. Thomas whistled again, and before long, Harold was hovering overhead. Evening, Thomas, he called. I'm on safety patrol because of the bad weather. You know, rescuing people and that sort of thing. It looks as if I'm needed here. Well, you can depend on me. If you can just go and rescue Donald's duck, he said, we can take care of her on the train. Easy, said Harold, and flew down towards the river. But it wasn't easy. 
Every time Harold drew near to Donald Duck, the wind from the rotor blades blew her across the ice so that she couldn't hop on board. Wait, shouted Thomas, I've got an idea. Why don't you sort of blow her towards the riverbank? It was a very good idea. Harold carefully positioned himself and blew Donald's duck towards the side of the frozen river. Once there, she hopped onto Harold and was carried to the bridge where Thomas was waiting. Well done, Harold, said Annie and Clarabelle. You are our hero. Just doing my job, said Harold. Then he flew off in search of someone else to rescue. The fireman and driver soon had Donald's duck warm and snug at the back of the cab. The wing is not badly hurt, said the fireman. You'll be as right as rain in a couple of days. Quack. I'd rather be as right as rain. Quack. Than as wrong as ice, quacked Donald's duck. When they returned to the shed, the fat controller gave his driver and fireman permission to take care of Donald's duck for a few days until she recovered. But first, he said, you must get some rest. You've all worked splendidly and helped us out of a difficult situation. I'll tell the others not to disturb you until you've had some sleep. But they had very little sleep that day, and for the next three days, Donald Duck would not stop talking. She talked about this, and she talked about that, or she talked about nothing at all. She was having a quacking good time, and she wanted everyone to know about it. Quack! I found a cracker in my tender. She was very, very dear. She cracked all night and through the day. She was driving me insane. My driver and my fireman tried everything they know to shoot the cracker away from me, but she did not want to go. The cracker clearly loves me. Was impossible to nap. So now we have befriended her. She rides inside my cab. She cracks in stations big and small. She cracks at people too. Now everyone calls her Donald's duck. What to call her a cracker? liked her very much, but they were pleased when the ice melted and Donald's duck flew back to the river. In no time at all, spring had arrived. The fat controller told all the drivers, firemen and guards to sweep out the shed and to give the engines and carriages a good spring clean. The engines like spring, but look forward to summer most of all. Then, in no time at all, summer arrived. The sun is shining, it's alive. 